Hello everyone, welcome to The Mudroom, our weekly free Uncommon Sense parenting class. How is everyone today? Can y'all believe it's November? Like October just went whoosh, it was here and now it's gone. And now the holidays are barreling down on top of us. We're gonna discuss that in a couple weeks though. I'm not quite ready to go there yet. <laughs> Every parent that I've spoken to recently has said that 22 has felt like everything has happened and yet nothing has happened this year. And that really resonated with me. So if you're feeling that way too, you're in good company because I can barely believe that we're here. It's the last four episodes of our fifth season. And that's like mind blowing. It's incredible. Five years ago, I never thought that I'd have a podcast or that it would run as long as it has and get over 100,000 plays within the last year alone. Like that's mind blowing. So thank you for being here and thank you for listening. That said, Someone recently pointed out that I don't actually have an episode on my blog or my podcast about what executive functions are and how they impact behavior. And upon inspection, they're right. I have addressed it in the context of so many different topics, but there is no overview of this anywhere in my public material and I have absolutely no excuse for it. So we're going to remedy that today and talk about what executive skills are and why they're so important to foster from a young age. Before we get into it, however, allow me to introduce myself. If you're just joining the rodeo, my name is Alana Robinson. I'm a parenting coach for parents of toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners, and I help you understand why your children are misbehaving and how to fix it without stickers, counting to three, or losing your shit. I'm your host here on The Mudroom. I'm the host of the Parenting Posse Facebook group, and I'm the creator of the Parentability Program, where I help you raise well-behaved kids who listen. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe so that you never miss another class. And if you want to continue the conversation, I strongly encourage you to come and join us in the Parenting Posse. Okay, so what in heaven's name are executive functioning skills? Let's start here. Executive functioning skills are essentially the tools our brain uses to do literally everything. There are a ton of different models for executive functioning, but that's what they all have in common. They are a set of mental processes or tools. Because there's so many models of executive functioning, I've seen as many as 45 executive functioning skills identified and I've seen as few as three. And neither are wrong. It's just a matter of how granular you want to get. 45 skills is extremely granular and it's very precise and mostly useful for fully grown adults who have disordered executive functioning in some capacity. Three is much more manageable and useful for young children. Personally, the model that I use and that we incorporate into parentability identifies eight separate skills. Working memory, impulse control, emotional control, task initiation, planning and prioritizing, self-monitoring, organization, and flexible thinking. I've found that that's granular enough that we can be precise in our intervention. It gives us enough information to really customize our approach but it's not so granular that it becomes completely overwhelming, which is very important because parents of young kids are, as a group, already overwhelmed enough. Eight seems to hit the sweet spot between enough information to be useful and not too much. So there's a few things that we need to know about executive skills in general. First, executive skills don't begin to develop until around age two. Before that, the brain has other things to focus on, mainly language and regulation development which means it's physically impossible for your 18 month old to have emotional control skills or impulse control skills or to plan and prioritize their desires. They can't do it, which shocks a lot of parents. Most parents feel that children should have some level of executive functioning by time they can walk. And that's just not the case. This is also the reason that two year olds can be somewhat difficult because developing all of these cognitive skills at the same time can be extremely tasking on the brain and therefore they're using a lot of energy. And just like any more visible skills, once they figure it out, they wanna use it. Just like once a baby starts pulling up and you can barely get them to sit down again, once a child starts figuring out how to use their working memory or how to use their flexible thinking, they want to practice using it all the damn time, which can cause problems, like suddenly proposing options that you didn't give them or that you can't make a promise to them anymore and bank on them forgetting about it in a few minutes. They also cause problems because they need to be used in order to develop their use them or lose them. So all two-year-olds are weak in their executive skills because they're just starting to develop them. 
But when you look at three-year-olds, for example, we're already starting to see that some skills are developing faster than others because they aren't robots, they don't level up. And by age five, we can usually identify skills that are really strong and others that are really weak. I like to use the analogy of cutting down a tree. Imagine that I come to you and I say, yo, I've got a tree that needs to be cut down. That's the task, chop down the tree. You have the time, you have the energy, you have the knowledge to complete the task. You are willing and able. And then I hand you a dull saw, which is your weak tool. Are you gonna be able to cut down that tree as expected? No, because not because you're defiant or because you're unwilling or stupid or lazy or any other character flaw. You can't do it because your tool is weak. You can try your hardest all damn day and you're barely going to make a dent in the tree. At the end of the day, you're going to be exhausted. You gave it your all. But the tree is still there. The task isn't completed. This is what happens when we ask our kids to do something that they know how to do. They have the time to do, the supplies to do, and they just don't do it. One of the skills they needed to complete that task is weak. But what happens when I get you to sharpen that saw to build that skill? Well, if you have a sharp saw and you put all that effort into it, you're gonna cut that tree down with relatively little effort and you're gonna have extra energy left over to start on another one, right? So that brings us to thing number two. Using our executive skills requires us to be regulated. It's not a chicken and the egg scenario. We know what has to come first, regulation. Because in either of those scenarios, you need the energy to use the tool. Because just like with the tree, it doesn't matter if you're willing, able, and have a sharp tool, if you don't have the energy to use it, Using a sharp tool requires less energy, but it still requires energy. If I come and ask you to cut that tree down while all your energy is being expended on something of a higher priority, like maybe there's a hungry black bear roaming around the forest the tree is in, it doesn't matter how sharp your tool is, your focus is going to be on making sure that that black bear doesn't come up behind you and eat you, which means you still can't use the tool. This causes problems when executive skills aren't something that are actively fostered because often children only get the opportunity to practice these skills when it's do or die. There's an expectation that they have to meet. Everybody's watching them. They need to perform even if they don't have the energy to perform. In which case, one of two things happens. They refuse, they stall out, they become defiant, they try to get you to do it for them. They ain't doing it. Executive skills exist in our neocortex, which isn't actually necessary for life. It makes us civilized human beings, but it doesn't keep the lights on, so to speak, or the heart pumping for that matter. So when we're low on energy, our brain actually shuts it off. It reverts to using our limbic system, which has no knowledge, reason, or skills. It just has emotions, memories, and safety. So they physically can't access those skills. So if they can't access that part of their brain, the other thing that might happen is they produce cortisol, which is a stress hormone that acts as emergency energy. The problem with cortisol is that it isn't real energy, so it'll give them the juice to access that skill at the level it's currently at, but it's not gonna turn the whole neocortex back on. They're still mainly losing, using <laughs> their limbic system, which means that they're going through the motions in order to stay safe, but they aren't actually learning from it, which is why kids often won't complete a task until you yell. They aren't regulated enough to use that weak skill. And when you yell, you induce cortisol, so they do it, but then the next time you ask, they still can't do it. The third thing is that since none of these skills can fit neatly in a box, they can be broken down more or clumped together more. If even one of these skills is weak, if your child doesn't have the energy to use one skill at any given moment, they can't complete the task at all. The whole chain breaks down. So like putting on your shoes requires you to use your working memory to remember the steps, remember where your shoes are. It requires you to plan and prioritize, to put the steps in order so that you aren't tying your shoes and then trying to put it on. You have to organize, you have to get your shoes, put them on the right feet. You have to self-monitor. You have to be aware of where you are in the process so that you don't keep doing the same step over and over and over. 
You also have to be aware of where you are physically in space so that you're not like putting your shoes on in the middle of a mud puddle or even just in someone else's way. You have to use flexible thinking. You need to be able to stop what you were doing and shift to putting your shoes on. And finally, task initiation to actually get up off your butt and do it. If any one of those skills is weak, the whole chain breaks down. So you can see how this dynamic causes a problem when you have a child who is just developing these skills, isn't great at self-regulating, and doesn't have the autonomy to take breaks or choose their own tasks. And this dynamic is responsible for most childhood behavior issues. So that's why in parentability, we go through three steps. The first is teaching your kids to regulate. You can't access your skills if you are dysregulated, full stop. So that's what we focus on first, teaching children the skills to calm their nervous system down and to recognize that it needs to be calmed down. This is where building a regulation cycle comes in. A regulation cycle is the stick in the spokes, so to speak. It stops the hamster wheel of doom of skills are weak so I don't have enough energy to use them, but then I don't use them and they never get stronger. A well-regulated child will appear to be more competent than a child who has stronger skills, but is dysregulated. Part of this process is coming up with some strategies to reduce the need for our kids to use their skills, which I know sounds counterproductive, but when our focus is on regulation, demanding higher level skill use isn't going to move us forward towards our goal. So we can come up with what we call bridging strategies. These aren't going to solve the problem long term, but it's going to make life easier in the short term. Once we have the child regulated on a fairly consistent basis, then we move to building up skills for just 10 minutes a day. We get our kids to engage in an activity, an interaction, or a game that requires them to use their weak skills in an environment where it's safe to fail. So they aren't hoarding their energy to protect themselves. If you succeed, awesome. But if you don't, that's okay, no big deal. This helps to make sure that they stay regulated while using their weak skill, and therefore they're actually learning from it. The practice is making progress. And once these problematic skills get stronger, parents can then back off of the bridging strategies and their regulation cycle generally gets longer. The windows of time between needing to regulate them gets bigger. Kind of like when a baby gets older and their wake windows get longer. The bigger their brain gets, and the better their brain gets at handling all the things it needs to handle, the longer they can stay awake. Same with executive skills. The better their brain gets at using their skills, the longer they can stay regulated. So I hope that clears up the role of executive skills play in children's behavior. If you'd like to learn more about this, come and join the free class that's linked in the description. We talk about this more in depth there. And if you'd like to join us in Parentability and work through this process with me, you'll have the opportunity to do that afterwards. Have a great day, everyone. And I'll see you next week in another Uncommon Sense Parenting class. Bye.